We've seen uh, how Jason Clay gave us a look from 60 miles up high. And then um, Pierre showed us a global map. And what I'm trying to do now is to bring you closer to eye level. Maybe not my eye level, but at least the cow's eye level. And remind you that the factory in our production system is this individual cow out here. This is where we get our milk. This is the productive unit of our industry. And if we go back, if this is all about history and we think about history a little bit, we can in fact remember that animal husbandry was always important in farming. And that in fact, even before farmers knew about requirements of nutrients for plants to grow or for animals to grow, they instinctively knew and by learning and by passing along that wisdom through generations that in order for you to have a successful farm, you had to have animals. And it was a recommended practice to bring that manure, put it back in the soil, to regenerate the soil so that the next season you could have crops to feed your animals and crops to feed people. And this type of activities that were carried out by those farmers in the past are still activities that farmers today perform on a daily basis that seem very small but that contribute to stewardship and the sustainability that we're talking about. Activities such as feeding your cows so that they are productive. Activities such as making sure that you have a healthy animal so that you have a productive herd. Activities such as selecting your best animals for breeding so that the next generation of animals is actually better and more productive and healthier than the generation that you had before. And all of this is important and all of this goes back to the ultimate sustainability which is in fact being able for a farmer to pass on that farm over to the next generation. We talked about being able to produce food, but it's juggling, this is a, a, an exercise in juggling over time. We need to produce food for today's demand and we need to produce food for, for tomorrow's demand. And these individuals right here are the ones that are going to be able to do that if they remain to be farmers. Now there are two central elements that have already been a very important part of farming in the past and they continue to be a very important part of farming right now. And those elements are efficiency and recycling. And there's a number of small things again that farmers do that contribute to efficiency and recycling every day. Let's look quickly here at a ration, a diet of a cow, typical cow in the Midwest that's lactating. You're going to notice that this animal is in fact able to consume a large portion of its feed from materials that we cannot eat, human inedible, or in some instances that we choose not to eat. And this is very important, this aspect is very important because it is the ability that that animal has in consuming those materials that humans do not choose or cannot eat that allows this animal to thrive on, on those materials. Whereas only 30% in this particular example would be materials that we could eat and would be in competition. These are materials such as food industry byproducts. So we grow plants and we consume plant-based diets and plant-based materials, but there's some stuff that we cannot eat. Well, guess what? Dairy cows consume that. Food crop residues. We grow crops 
And there's portions of those crops that we don't use ourselves. Well, dairy cows consume that. And in child roughages. So for example, they are able to consume the entire plant of corn, whereas we only eat the kernels. But these benefits that I just described are sometimes forgotten. And so I want to talk about how we calculate efficiency because these items that I describe are forgotten as a result of calculating efficiency in relative terms. And so I'd like to first, right now, give you a very simple example. And that's why we have this picture of a freeway in Chicago or some other city. The idea here is that if you look at all these cars and you put your hat on, remember, it's not what we think, it's how we think that Jason alluded to. Any of these cars are more fuel efficient than this bus if we talk in miles per gallon. However, if we think about the true function of these vehicles and we start to think about the number of people that travel a given distance for the amount of fuel consumed, because this bus can carry a lot of people, it will probably be a lot more efficient in taking people a certain distance than those, all those individual cow, uh, cars. So let's think about how we calculate efficiency for dairy cows. And right here, you can see the conversion efficiency of nutrients such as energy or calories or protein are usually calculated by doing a simple ratio. They're the proportion of outputs over the, or the, over the amount of inputs. That proportion is what we're looking at. Now, this is one of the ways in which we could think if we were able to eat everything that cows eat, it would be fair to calculate this conversion efficiency by put using total outputs over total inputs. And if we did that, then we would have as a result these orange yellowish bars that pretty much tell us that dairy cows are fairly inefficient because this is a low number which means that you know you need a lot of input per, to produce output it's below one this consumes supply of food for humans because at the end of the day that's what we're all about right but now let's think about it in a different way because we cannot consume everything that cows can consume we need to be more uh, appropriate to calculate conversion efficiencies on a human edible basis. So now we take human edible outputs and we divide them by human edible inputs. If we do that, we see that in fact dairy cattle are positive contributors and they in fact build supply of human edible food. And that's what we're all about. Now there's one more element that I already alluded to in a previous slide, and it's the element that dairy cows are also excellent recyclers. We've talked about it already. There's a lot of nutrients in that manure that can be brought back to the land so that we can produce crops. Just as an example, that's very difficult for you to read up there, but one dairy cow produces enough manure daily to fertilize 56 pounds of corn. In fact, that could also be used to fertilize 84 pounds of tomatoes. Now this story, the story about the potential or unlocking the potential in manure is another story. And I'm not going to talk about it. In fact, my colleague Jerry Bingold will come up here and finalize this presentation for today to, uh, with particular, that particular story on manure. Thank you. <laughs>